Daddy's Book Nook! Once Upon a Slime by Andy Maxwell Once upon a time, Goldilocks visited her old friends, the Three Bears. Sure, they'd gotten off to a rocky start, what with the whole porridge thing, but by now everyone was totally over it. A plus, she thought. Who could stay mad at a girl with such beautiful golden locks? Goldilocks had just opened the bear's door when... Sporb! Ew! Gross! Goldilocks yelled. Okay, wise guys, who did this? Not me, Papa Bear said. Well, I would never, Mama Bear said. Goldilocks turned to Baby Bear. Then it had to be you. You're still mad I broke your chair. Baby Bear can't even reach that high, Mama Bear said. Goldilocks squinted suspiciously. Huh. Well, if it wasn't you, who did it? I don't know. Papa Bear scratched his head. Maybe Granny can help us. She loves a good mystery. Yay! It's a real whodunit! said Baby Bear as they headed out to Granny's. On the way, Goldilocks and the three bears ran into Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf having a picnic. Um, excuse me, said Goldilocks. Did you two see any creepy characters lurking around here? Uh, somebody just slimed me at the bear's house. Oh, hey, Goldie, Wolf mumbled. Listen, Red and I are kind of busy here. Granny's really sick, and we gotta get this basket to her. Wish we could help and all, but... Oh, Granny, uh, you're looking well. Granny was hustling up the path. What's that supposed to mean? shouted Granny. And get your paws off my cake! She lunged for her basket of goodies when... <coughs> Ew, gross! wailed Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, why'd you ruin the cake, Granny? whined a wolf. I was eating that. You think I'd slime myself? hollered Granny. I didn't do this. I should pot you right in the schnozzle, Wolfie. Take a chill pill, Granny, said Wolf. As Granny wound up to suck him in the snout, Mama Bear broke up the scuffle. One sliming could be an accident, Papa Bear said. But two... Someone is definitely up to something. Goldilocks had a brainstorm. Rapunzel, she's always been out to get me. Before long, the gang arrived at Rapunzel's tower. Admit it, Rapunzel, Goldie shouted. It was you who slimed me. You've always been jealous of my beautiful curly locks. Just as Goldilocks grabbed that long ponytail and gave it a good yank, Rapunzel herself strolled around the corner. Hey, everyone! The group gasped. Huh? If Rapunzel was standing right there, then whose hair was... Gasp! Ew! Gross! Everyone yelled. The sky is falling! squeaked Baby Bear. Wrong fairy tale, Baby Bear, said Mama Bear. Hey, why'd you slime us, Rapunzel? Wolf demanded. Rapunzel wiped a glob of gloop from her dress. Me? Ew, I didn't. This stuff is disgusting. But where did that fake hair come from? Red wondered. It was a trap, Goldilocks declared. Hey, said the wolf. I know three little guys who know a lot about traps. And that's how they ended up at the Three Little Pigs' garden. Oh no! The wolf! cried the littlest pig. He'll huff and he'll puff. Just cool your chinny chin chins, dudes, said wolf. Let's not forget which one of us got burned last time. Wait! You're that wolf, too? asked Red. The wolf shrugged. Hey, it's a living. Look, Goldilocks interrupted. 
We're just trying to figure out who's been sliming everyone. Got any ideas? How dare you, the biggest pig snorted. Just because we're pigs, when you hear the word slime, you automatically think of us. Before Goldilocks could even respond, Splurl, splurl. Ew, gross! The garden sprinkler was spraying slime. Everyone ran for cover. Ah, so it was you, Wolf accused the pigs. It wasn't us! Somebody must have rigged it, they protested. Okay, people, Goldilocks shouted. No one's going anywhere until we figure this out. Let's break it down, Goldilocks began. If it isn't any of the bears, although I'm still not 100% sure about Baby Bear, and it's not Little Red Riding Hood or the Big Bad Wolf or Granny. I sure wish I'd thought of it, though, said Granny. And it's not Rapunzel, not the pigs. And it wasn't me. Well, duh, Rapunzel rolled her eyes. Who would think it's funny to see a bunch of fairy tale folks getting slimed? Asked Goldilocks. And that's when she realized there was one person they hadn't thought of. It was you, the author, Goldilocks accused. You slimed us. Me? said the author. What? No, that's crazy. He made me live in a straw house, whined one of the pigs. And he made a prince climb up my hair like a rope, said Rapunzel. And he made you lousy kids eat all my cake, Granny said. I ought to punch him in the schnozzle. Guys, guys, the author broke in. Look, Yes, fine, I did write the story, so I guess in that way, technically, I did kind of slime you, but I couldn't actually slime you. I mean, I'm not even in the story, right? Ah, uh, whatever, I get it, Goldilocks said. But then who did do it? Because we're totally out of suspects. Suddenly, there was a mighty croak. Oh, no, you're not. At their feet stood a small frog wearing a crown. Who did it, you ask? Twas I, the frog prince, I confess. At last I have seen my revenge upon all of you. The frog cleared his throat. <clears throat> Let's start with you, big bad wolf, pretending to be king of the forest when I, the frog prince, am the true heir to the throne. And you, Rapunzel, remember that day I tried to croak a duet with you and you pushed me off the tower? That really hurt. As for Grandmother, I'm terribly sorry. I was actually going for Baby Bear, who had nearly stepped on me last spring. But you, little pigs, you poke fun at my slimy pond when you literally, literally live in a pigsty. Then there's you, Goldilocks. The frog wiped away a gloopy tear. Oh, Goldilocks, you hurt me the most. You could have been my princess, the frog said wistfully. All I desired was a kiss to free me of this curse, but alas. And so I have taken great pleasure in drenching each of you with slime for my pond to teach you an important lesson about honesty, dignity, and honor. Everyone was speechless. Wow, said Red finally. Anybody here know how to speak frog? It really seems like this fella is trying to tell us something, doesn't it? Goldilocks bent down and picked up the frog. It's okay, little guy. Come here. Let me give you a smooch. I don't want your kiss, croaked the frog prince as Goldilocks puckered up. I want revenge. Poof. With her kiss, the frog prince turned back into a regular prince. Ahem. <clears throat> as I was saying, the prince continued, "'Twas I, the frog prince, who slimed you. There was an awkward moment. Wait a minute, you're a prince, said Goldilocks, eyeing him. Like, with a whole kingdom to rule? You know, I'd be really great at that. She kissed him again. Ew, gross, said Rapunzel. That's messed up, Wolf said. 
I guess all's well that ends well, said Papa Bear. Is there any more cake? Granny asked nobody in particular. And so they all lived happily ever after. Or in the case of Goldilocks and her prince, slimily ever after. The end. Uh, that's for messing up my hair, author. <laughs>